As a born and bred New Yorker, and now having been an Upper West Sider for the last five years, I've always enjoyed discovering the hidden gems my neighborhood has to offer, specifically its ties to the arts, including television and movie filming locations. Sandwiched between Central Park and Riverside Park, the Upper West Side is a 1.9 square mile expanse of primarily residential homes and largely off the radar of many tourists. For reference to those who may not be as familiar with Manhattan, this is the Times Square area, the spot most visitors want to be in when they visit New York City. But there's so much more to see, and today I'm going to be taking you off the beaten path to explore iconic filming locations in one of the most underrated historic neighborhoods. Though this may be just two blocks north of the official Upper West Side Zone, I thought this would be the perfect spot to start the tour. Do you recognize it? Tom's Restaurant is a staple of the American television sitcom Seinfeld, featured as a regular gathering spot for the characters to grab a bite. It was known as Monk's Cafe on the show. Though the interior looks nothing like the show since that was actually a set, you too can enjoy a meal at this classic New York diner which has been in business since the 1940s. I only recently learned that this is also the diner that inspired Suzanne Vega's 1987 hit, Tom's Diner. Feel free to take the one train, aka the subway, uptown from Times Square to 110th Street to kick off this walking tour. Just a short jaunt away, you will be transported to the bygone era of the 1950s as we swing by Ms. Maisel's apartment. The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel is one of Amazon Prime's most celebrated shows and one that extensively features scenes on the Upper West Side. In fact, my block has been shut down several times while filming was underway. This building serves as the exterior to Midge's lavish residence. And if you find yourself captivated by the architecture, I recommend continuing your walk downtown along Riverside Drive to take in the detail of notable mansions and pre-war homes. As you continue further into the heart of the Upper West Side, street signs are adorned with historic district designations. Keep an eye out in this area as you'll likely spot plaques on buildings highlighting famed residents of years past. Also be on the lookout for these relics. The Upper West Side is home to the last remaining and operating phone booths in Manhattan, according to the New York Times. If you are a huge fan of Home Alone 2, I'd recommend a quick detour to our next location on 95th Street, the home of Kevin McAllister's Uncle Rob and Aunt Georgette. Doesn't look familiar? That's what I thought. I only learned this by visiting the location myself, but even though the movie references this exact address, the brownstone depicted in the film was actually a soundstage at the Universal Studios backlot in LA, according to BrickUnderground.com. Aesthetically, I think the set did a pretty good job representing the area that the real address occupies. Heading back west and dipping into Riverside Park will unveil our next location, a spot where two characters who fell in love on the internet finally met. The classic finale of the movie You've Got Mail featuring Meg Ryan and Tom Hanks took place right here at the 91st Street Garden. I'll admit I waited for Tom Hanks, but I guess today was not my day. The romantic computer-aged film was essentially director Nora Ephron's love letter to the Upper West Side, and you can spot a number of filming locations in the area, including Kathleen Kelly's apartment on 89th, Cafe Lalo on 83rd, and Zay Bars on 80th. Zaybars, a legendary specialty food store, is frequently referenced in pop culture and has made cameos in Vampire Weekend's Sunflower music video and Woody Allen's Manhattan, among other things. On 88th Street, one block away from Kathleen Kelly's apartment in You've Got Mail, you'll get a double dose of sitcom history. 160 Riverside Drive served as the exterior to Liz Lemon's apartment in 30 Rock, and as it turns out, her neighbors directly across the street were Will and Grace. Continuing downtown, you'll stumble across another real-life address that ended up actually being in Los Angeles, Jerry Seinfeld's apartment on 81st Street. Apartment 5A was Jerry's fictional home on the show, and though the building is a real address, it was not used for the exterior of the show. Heading towards Central Park, you'll be greeted by the sprawling American Museum of Natural History. It's closed now during the pandemic, so don't be fooled by the lack of people, but you may recognize this location from the 2006 film Night at the Museum, which, by the way, is an actual thing that you can do. I was invited to spend the night at the museum in 2019. Such a cool way to see all of the exhibits inside. A stroll down Central Park West will quickly reveal the ominous facade of the famed building, the Dakota. This residential address was most well known as the location where John Lennon was murdered, but is home to many more famous names and was used as the foreboding exterior of Roman Polanski's Rosemary's Baby. 
Continuing down the same street, you will soon come across our next location just inside Central Park, Tavern on the Green. This prominent restaurant has been featured in a myriad of films, including Ghostbusters, and sits at one of the gateways to New York City's most well-known parks. It's a pricey place, but comes with an iconic setting. Right next door is another well-known Ghostbusters location, the Spook Central Apartment Building, which occupies real estate on Central Park West. Our final two locations take us toward the Lincoln Center area. As you make your way in that direction, the Empire Hotel will come into view. And if you were a fan of the 2007 drama Gossip Girl, you will recognize this location as the hotel character Chuck Bass invested in. Lastly, we conclude this Upper West Side tour at one of the most notable destinations in the neighborhood, Lincoln Center. There are too many movies to name that have used this establishment as their backdrop, but to name two, I would choose Black Swan and The Producers. Addresses to all the destinations featured will be included in the description of the video. Thanks for coming along.